So hey, Nico, you recently asked about the personnel in my solo first album called Eat Your Sad. And uh, I thought, hey, maybe some other people might find this information useful too. So I make a little video and walk you through it. Um, as you uh, may know, every one of these, there are three separate versions of this album with a different bonus track at the end. Um, I really went for it on my first record. Um, and they all come in these little unique sliding cases. Um, the booklet for each is, uh, is available from this sort of bottom flap off to the side. And it goes into detail with uh, the, the, uh, the personnel that are on uh, in total on the record you can see there on the on the side which i think is information that's also mimicked maybe on uh, bandcamp for instance then i go through the special thanks and all of the lyrics um except for the cover song seven days by sting which i would have needed to have purchased you know uh rights to reproduce and i didn't want to pay that money um, and then I go through and these are photos that I took of all the players that are on this version of the, of the, of the record. Now, if you wanted to know about individual players on every tune, then right before the lyrics for each one, then I go through and talk about exactly who is on every single tune. So, <clears throat> for instance, you wanted to know where Jerry Watts and Joel Taylor played. Well, you can basically look through, and I mean, I can tell you, but uh, you know, just giving you an example of, of who's on what here. Um, I believe that both of them were on Seven Days in this particular record. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's been a long time now since this came out, but I still remember recording it. <laughs> so there's Jerry Watts, Jerry Watts Jr., in fact and Joel Taylor on drums, which is good because they sort of relate in a way to uh, the the police story arc because they've, of course, played with Andy Summers a lot live, as has Catisse Buckingham on the Earth and Sky album of Andy's. So that kind of also is nice to have him on there on that particular track. Um, there's different people on here. There's, you know, in a couple of songs, there's, you know, Matt Johnson from uh, the drummer from uh, Jeff Buckley's Grey's album, and there's uh, Tamar Martirosian, who goes by Tamar Caprellian as a solo artist, for instance, um, who had a solo career. Stuart Cole is uh, part of uh, uh, the Magnetic Zeros, Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros, and uh, there's, I mean, there's lots of people here who have done various uh, notable things. <clears throat> you know, we've got, uh, you know, I don't know, lots of lots of people. Joel Shearer was part of uh, the great band called Pedestrian, who also plays for a lot of other artists. And uh, you know, you you name it. There's so many people who are on this record, right? And they're all photographed here. Now, if you do go to one of the other versions of the record, um, they were produced in much smaller quantity. Um, as limited editions, I mean, but they're all limited edition in a way because these are independent releases. So this version has artwork by a local Los Angeles artist called Graham Neil Moore, who has this kind of interesting effect that he does with the cutting out of photos and reassembling them in different ways. And everything about this is different, um, not only in terms of the layout and design, but also since it has a different 12th track on it, um, it therefore has a different personnel listing at the front because uh, there's differences in the overall personnel uh, because of the 12th track. And then also I needed to include a different array of photos in the back spread to include the people on, 12th, on the 12th track here and to take away the people who were previously on the 12th track on the other copy. So little interesting differences there. And then this was another variety because I had three songs, each of which I wanted to consider as a 12th bonus track on the physical copies only, which, you know, does not appear 
for instance, on the, the, the downloadable copies on Amazon and such. I wanted there to be an incentive to get a physical copy. But again, <clears throat> this also means that there's a different lineup of total personnel. And yet, you know, the, obviously the lyrics are the same, but the, the photography, the layout, everything about it inside is different. And then, of course, it also has a different uh, lineup of people on the back. It has this interesting photo that is subtle, but it's actually me leaning up against a wall that has the, a painting of a bench on it. And it was actually quite challenging to get that photo because to, to push yourself up on one leg for a long time uh, while leaning up against the wall and looking natural is actually quite difficult. <laughs> anyway, this was again, <clears throat> a very limited version <clears throat> that came out. And you'll notice too that the the name of the record is Eat Your Sad, and so the, I, the logo that was created for this <clears throat> was a teardrop on a plate, and that was uh, drawn by artist Gary Bernard uh, of Philadelphia at the time, a fine artist, illustrator, and oil painter, and he now lives, I believe, in North Carolina. But there was also a different version of that created for, you know, this one looked a little bit more regimented, less illustrative, so I made this version, this more computerized version for this copy, and this one that has this uh, photo collage of, uh, of elements by Mike Mike Garson. Uh, he also made a logo that has these machine parts that has that teardrop on the plate. Now, um, I also, although never really made a promotional push to give them away, uh, I, I made some patches so if anyone were to buy this album today, I would probably include at least one of these patches in, in a different color. If someone wanted them, I would probably give them one of each color. Because I have, even though there are very small numbers of these made, I never really gave them away. I just uh, never really got around to making that part of the promotional push to sell these records. Um, the last detail that I think would be kind of interesting only to Sting and Police collectors is that <clears throat> I licensed the, the Woodwink logo from David Wood of Impulse Sound Studios in Newcastle because I wanted my first solo record to be, or to appear to be, released on the same record label as Sting's first recordings. And, uh, you know, as we know, David Wood uh, he created this label called Woodwink. It's kind of a play on the W-U-D instead of W-O-O-D. Um, but I licensed that from him for the use on my uh, on my first record and on my second record called Treat Love Kind. But uh, but this is uh, just a little piece of it's like the Easter egg aspect of my solo releases in that it does have a little detail there that's interesting. So anyway, I uh, I put this together specifically, Nico, for you to check out. Uh, but uh, I thought maybe everyone or you know someone else might be interested <laughs> at some other point and I wanted to uh, to to show it show it around anyway um, hope you continue to enjoy the record and thank you so much for your kind comments cheers <laughs>